Hello gorgeous, have you ever wondered to yourself what if a specific YouTuber never posted to YouTube? Well I'm guessing yes because you clicked on this video so I am in fantastic company. I have had an incredible amount of requests to do a Jenna Barbels butterfly effect video and what I didn't realize is that y'all just wanted me to experience feelings. Disclaimer and content warning, in this video as I've already specified we are going to be outlining the butterfly effect of what if Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube so in this video there will be brief brief discussions of racism. If you find this topic potentially triggering, please proceed with caution or consider clicking off of the video altogether because at the end of the day, I do not want my content to jeopardize your happiness and jeopardize your well-being. Full transparency, I have been a longtime watcher and fan of Jenna Marbles and her content, so I already have a bias and it is positive. And of course, as always, even though I trust every single one of you, I still need to explicitly state that I do not promote, encourage, or endorse any kind of mean, negative, harassing, malicious behavior. My videos are strictly for entertainment purposes only, so I do not want for any kind of mean hateful harassing malicious behavior to go out there into the world because of something that I've said or on my behalf. We are of course allowed to keep it cheeky, we're allowed to keep it messy, we're allowed to keep it fun but please keep it to this comment section and this channel only. With all of that said, let us outline what if Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube. Jenna has already throughout the research of this video been one of the hardest butterfly effects for me to construct because god dang it I just kept getting hit with so many of the feels. And where I think her biggest effect lies sounds like it doesn't matter but it definitely does because Jenna's biggest effect lies with us, her audience, her fans, the people that she has inspired over the years. I'll make my point. Jenna originally joined YouTube and started posting around 2006 but not on the channel that she became famous for being Jenna Marbles. Instead a channel called Mori 66 where she would post school projects and really whatever else she wanted. Primarily the channel seemed to be used to share videos to family and friends on Facebook. So when we ask ourselves the question what if Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube we really need to start here because it's this channel where Jenna developed her love for making videos and what I'm really enjoying about going back and doing all of these videos on the OG YouTubers is just seeing these humble beginnings. Seeing that the primary or only motivation to post to YouTube is because you want to and not for the fame and fortune. If fame and fortune is your primary motive, that's dope. That's fine. Do whatever makes you happy. It's just refreshing and nice to see that some of these big names on YouTube started posting because of their love for it with nothing more than a silly idea. Thing is, if Jenna kept posting to her original channel, Mori 66 I think that she still would have reached the heights that we saw her reach with her second channel, Jenna Mar Marbles because it was seemingly one specific video that started this traction to her incredibly successful online career. How to trick people into thinking you're good looking. This video concept and posting isn't unique to Jenna Marbles the channel, it's unique to Jenna Marbles the person, hence why we have to start all the way back at her original channel. The reason Jenna started her Jenna Marbles channel is something that she's possibly addressed more than once but she definitely addressed it in her 300th video reacting to her old videos. In this video Jenna simply says that her mum was trying to find a job and whenever you googled their last name her YouTube channel would pop up which could potentially ruin her chances at getting a specific job. So seemingly Jenna removed the Mori 66 channel and started a new one called Jenna Marbles. Marbles named after her gorgeous Chihuahua Marbles who was named after a ventriloquist puppet in Seinfeld. The first two videos on Jenna Marbles are nothing special for lack of a better phrasing. They are Charles Franklin Marbles is a sad sad man and me and Mr. Marbles having a convo. Some poor quality stupid fun. However, the third video posted to the channel is that of the infamous how to trick people into thinking you're hot. How to be attractive. I be pretty is lie. The video is mistitled so much according to Jenna in her 300th video reacting to old videos but whatever you call it to a Jenna fan or a 2010 fan of YouTube when you simply say remember that two minute video of that girl putting on makeup convincing people she's attractive? They would automatically know that you're talking about how to trick people into thinking you're good looking. Posted over 11 years ago July 2010 and has now amassed over 72 million views. <laughs> 72 million views 
And I can honestly say that at least a thousand of those were me back in 2010. <laughs> Within three weeks of the video being posted, according to the Wayback Machine, the video had amassed over 7.8 million views. Even for today's standards, that is an incredible feat. And for all of these reasons, this is why I say that this video idea is not unique to Jenna Marbles the channel, but unique to Jenna Marbles the person. Because this new channel wasn't started so that she could distance herself from past, other, or different content. Instead, it was created so that she could distance herself from her last name for the job's sake of her mother. And I am assuming, yes, but Jenna being Jenna, I think it's a correct assumption. Those three initial videos posted to the Jenna Marbles channel, I think that she would have posted it to her original Jane Maury 66 channel. And if that's the case, we would have seen the same trajectory of her online career. So if Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube and never posted to Jane Maury 66, then she never would have developed a love for making videos and posting to YouTube. So she never would have posted the how to trick people into thinking you're good looking video and never would have become the creator that we all know and love today. But also wouldn't have had such a public business breakup with Dave Portnoy. Jenna was given one of her first big time jobs working for Dave Portnoy at Barstool Sports as his assistant. And then after showing her worth as an employee, but also a writer, she was given control of Stulala, the female sub branch of Barstool Sports. And Jenna wrote for Stulala for a bit and posted to YouTube simultaneously. Here's the messy part. Dave says one thing, Jenna says another. People have made their own speculations, their own assumptions. Jenna actually thanks Dave in her Draw My Life video for inspiring her love for making videos, but also for teaching her about the business. Dave seemingly uses this as ammunition to say that he made Jenna. Jenna has since deleted the Draw My Life video and I can't say when she did or why she did and if why she did was specifically because Dave has seemingly used her thanks as ammunition. But from what I can piece together, Jenna posts her how to trick people into thinking you're good looking video and it gets reposted to Barstool Sports. There seems to be some sort of issue as to Dave or Barstool Sports getting some sort of credit for the virality of the video because of this reposting. When some people have reported that in fact Barstool reposting the video was actually after the viral wave was hitting, so it brought more eyes to their side. After this issue met no reconciliation, Jenna left a huge middle finger post to Stulala announcing her departure from Barstool. Dave then seemingly made a follow-up post to Stulala calling Jenna ungrateful as well as other lovely insults and seemingly shut down the site. From what I can tell, Jenna has moved on from this situation and Dave hasn't, taking quite a few opportunities to trash Jenna and her character. Weirdly, Dave not letting go of this business relationship and not letting go of how it ended doesn't surprise me because he has always viewed the media as a business and according to both him and Jenna, he taught Jenna everything. So I would dare say that he understands the profitability of hate clicks. Jenna is incredibly loved by the internet. So Dave taking any and every opportunity to make content out of his grudge is profitable. And I would say that he knows this. And considering the allegations that have come out against Dave recently, I assume that this thought process is within his character. So if Jenna never posts to YouTube, then there is the possibility of a trajectory change for Dave and Barstool Sports because the hate clicks have no reason to click. All of the indefensive Jenna comments have no reason to comment because there isn't a Jenna to defend. This effect of course wouldn't be incredible because Jenna didn't make Dave or Barstool, but this unwavering grudge against Jenna has possibly pushed Dave's content to audiences that he wouldn't have been able to reach without this high school bullshit. But as you can see from Jenna's content, she didn't need this high school bullshit to achieve what she has achieved. I completely forgot about this chapter in her life until I researched for this video. Jenna, as a person, from my perspective at least, has shown a lot of growth over the years in front of the camera, both subtly and bluntly. The person who was creating content in 2011 is incredibly different to the person who was creating content in 2019. But what remained consistent was that she was Jenna. Jenna as a person from all of the research I've done for this video specifically, but also unknowingly because I've been a long time watcher of hers, is a person that posts to YouTube because they want to. If she wants to participate in the full face using only highlighter challenge, even though she's not a beauty guru and using actual highlighters, she's posting it. She wants to dye her hair and cut her hair herself? Brace yourself because she's doing it. Do you like plants? No? Too bad, you're getting a plant tour. Have you ever heard of a land shark? No? Here's a song. <laughs> I think the sad reality is if you could sum me up as a Jenna Marbles video, it's probably land shark. 
What I am simply trying to explain is that Jenna never shied away from being Jenna, and I would say that that's why we grew to love her as a person and as a creator. Because we, as her audience, trusted her and trusted what she was showing us on camera, and a lot of the time, we could relate to what she was showing us on camera. With her charisma and popularity, it is absolutely no wonder why she grew to the popularity she did so quickly. And because she was an OG YouTuber, her presence on YouTube definitely benefited the platform. Her consistently making enjoyable content definitely benefited the platform because it kept people coming back. People kept flooding back to Jenna's channel, back to Jenna's content, and because of this, people were flooding back to YouTube, and people possibly were sticking around watching other YouTubers, watching other YouTube videos, which in turn, more ads, and therefore benefited the platform. So if Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube, YouTube isn't screwed without her because she didn't make YouTube, but at the same time, there is the possibility of a trajectory change, a trajectory slowdown, because Jenna was an absolute powerhouse. But it isn't just YouTube's trajectory that slows down. Max No Sleeve's career trajectory possibly slows down to nothing. Jenna has had two public relationships, the first being with fellow YouTuber Max No Sleeves. In Max's Draw My Life video, he mentions a girl that got locked out of their apartment complex and therefore got locked out of her apartment. They exchanged a few cute words until she slipped into the window of her apartment. Then eventually this very odd, but I am guessing endearing moment turned into a relationship that turned into love that eventually turned into an adorable dog family. This girlfriend was a YouTuber and had such a passion for making videos, had such a love for making videos that he was inspired to start making videos himself and make a YouTube channel. In this video, he even thanks Jenna. In Jenna's now deleted Draw My Life video and I watched it when it originally came out and I found a re-uploaded version and it looks essentially how I remembered it, so I think it's pretty legit. I could of course be wrong and it might not be a legitimate re-upload, but it does fit my memory, if that all makes sense. But in this video, she even talks about the same meet cute and the same dog family that she had with Max. So if Jenna never posted to YouTube, Max may not have had all of this love and inspiration around him to start his own YouTube channel. So that is 541,000 subscribers that cease to exist, and with it, 48 million views that cease to exist as well. How in the world are people going to be able to learn the proper way to cut the sleeves off of your shirts? Now, I don't know about you, but that is a huge domino effect in my personal opinion, especially going through some of Max's older content because it's very easy to see the Jenna Marbles inspiration in those videos. This isn't to say that Max couldn't have had a successful YouTube channel without Jenna because it's very obvious that he has worked incredibly hard for the audience that he has. This is just to say that according to Max in his Draw His Life video, it was Jenna's love and passion for making videos that catalyzed his love for making videos. But it wasn't just Max No Sleeves that Jenna's love for making videos inspired to start their own YouTube channel. It was also Julian. Is it a Jenna Marbles video? If we don't add rhinestones. Shaking that was probably a very bad idea. In Julian's Draw My Life video, I am so glad that these YouTubers did Draw My Life videos because it made the research for this timeline so easy to put together. In Julian's Draw My Life video, he discusses how he used to work at AMP radio station during the day and then a bar called South at night. One night when he was working at the bar South, he met this really cute girl and he got to spend some time with her. And then after this initial meeting and this initial hangout, they started dating. This person being Jenna. And Jenna showed him her work and her world of YouTube. He even got to go with her to Ireland because he got to work security detail for her in Ireland. He said in his Draw My Life video that Jenna really opened up his eyes to the world of YouTube and he found it so intriguing because he'd just never seen anything like it before. Julian started consistently posting to YouTube in 2014 and since then has gained 2.53 million subscribers subscribers and over 243 million views. Once again, could Julian have done this without Jenna? Of course, there's absolutely nothing stopping him. But by the looks of his channel in the early days and his Draw My Life video, once again, it was Jenna's passion and love for making videos and posting them to YouTube that inspired him to post to YouTube. So if Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube, we can also say goodbye to Julian because if she never posted to YouTube, Julian never would have been hit with this dose of inspiration that led him to starting his channel. Which, is that not kind of mental? One person, YouTube slows down, Max No Sleeve slows down, and Julian slows down. One person, 
just one person and three big hefty dominoes either don't fall or fall very differently. And that's the big thing that I found when it comes to Jenna Marble's domino effect. I will quite confidently say that Jenna is one of the most loved creators that has ever been on social media. One of the reasons I think she grew to this level of admiration is because with everything she posts, you can see her passion, her joy in what she's making. It may be a full set of acrylic nails, but hot diggity damn, she is all in for this adventure. <laughs> but with so many other other creators, I've talked about their other business adventures, but Jenna hasn't really had any. She doesn't have a book which was incredibly popular for OG YouTubers back in the day. I would say that most OG YouTubers would have a book. She's been quoted to routinely turn down acting gigs and TV endorsements. There's been a speculated metric fuck ton of business and financial adventures tossed towards Jenna. But by the sounds of it, Jenna has declined a vast majority of this metric fuck ton. From all of my research and what people have said working with Jenna or knowing Jenna personally, except for possibly Dave Portnoy. Jenna is an incredible person and was all about YouTube, making videos and posting videos. And this is where her passion lies. Back when Jenna posted her Draw My Life video, she said in the video that she was sad Jenna again, which I'll be honest, hit me really weird because a lot of my life right now in this very moment is lining up with her life back then in that very moment. And it felt like a very personal attack. <laughs> There was a specific part of that video where I was like, oh, I could, I could have drawn this. Mm. But even though she was sad, Jenna, again, it was YouTube that made her happy. It was you that made her happy. And without all of your love and support, she would have been lost. So for Jenna specifically, I can't really talk about her off-platform adventures because there was close to nothing. Because when Jenna's in, she is all in. It's either zero or 100. It's either zero or 1000, let's be honest. 100 doesn't really sum up Jenna enough. Oh, you want a full face using only highlighter challenge? Boom, actual highlighters. <laughs> <laughs> and she was 1000% for YouTube, her videos and her audience. Her off-platform adventures were things like the critically acclaimed Smosh the Movie. <laughs> In Smosh the Movie, she was given the character of Jenna Marbles. <laughs> She she played herself. And in this reality, I feel as though she would have been recast with someone just as popular, just as easily identifiable, and just as easy to write into the script as a character. Eve from Epic Rap Battles of History, I feel as though would have been recast as absolutely anyone else who was willing to play the part of Eve. The first YouTube wax figure in Times Square's Madame Toussaint's would have just gone to someone else. In the reality we live in, this feels like something incredibly huge because it is. And the novelty of having one of your favorite YouTubers be able to take a selfie with you is absolutely incredible. But if Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube, she certainly isn't getting a wax figure in Madame Toussaint's and someone else is taking her waxy immortalized place. Maybe Michelle Phan, but really it could have been anyone out of the top creators list of 2014, because I think it takes more than a week to make a realistic wax figure. I'm, I'm not a professional though, but I think I, I have a slight suspicion that it would take more than a week. And I'm not gonna lie, this is where I genuinely hit this writing wall for this set of notes for this butterfly effect. Because I've said this in all of my butterfly effect videos so far, because I stand by it, but one of the biggest effects that a creator has is with their audience, is with every piece of entertainment that they put out there. There is a huge effect in the glimpse into their life that they give us. Jenna's I would say is the most evident out of all of the creators creators that I've talked about, but I would also say that it's the biggest effect that she has. This isn't my first video on Jenna Marbles. When I first started diving into, dipping my toes into the world of commentary, I did a video discussing my thoughts and opinions when it came to why we as an audience still feel the void of Jenna Marbles. And I stick by everything that I said in that video. Jenna effortlessly made her audience feel as though the relationship that we had with her was mutual, that we knew her as much as she knew us. She managed to do this by making content that every single one of us could relate to. DIY haircut and color, DIY acrylic nails, dogs being nasty, loving TikTok. It really felt like she was the same as us, even though the reality of the situation is that her circumstances are incredibly different and her circumstances are incredibly unobtainable for the vast majority. But it just never felt this way. She never felt unobtainable in her content. We know that Jenna Marbles is a zero or 1000 kind of human being with absolutely no in between. She was 1000% for YouTube. She was 1000% for her videos, her content for her audience. 
until she wasn't. Jenna's final video to YouTube was posted June 25th of 2020 and has since been deleted. In my previous video on Jenna, I kept incorrectly calling it taking accountability. The video is actually called a message and I'm so sorry that I kept calling it the wrong name. In this video, she discussed quite a few things. She talked about her past content. She took accountability for this past content and just overall expressed that she wasn't having fun anymore. And because of this, she needed to take a break for a while or forever. That video was posted almost two years ago now and people still miss Jenna. Corners of the internet, loud corners of the internet are still not over her absence and are still begging for her return. If Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube then she never would have posted a message and then over the last almost two years her audience and a big corner of the internet couldn't still be mourning her departure and still be missing her to this day. You may be thinking to yourself mourn is an interesting choice of words but I think that there has been some stages of grief experienced by the Jenna Marbles audience. People were commenting for quite some time that this cannot be real. People were, people still are waiting for her to return and they have been waiting all of these days for her to return as if she was going to return straight away. There was quite a lot of fighting in comment sections but specifically on Twitter about people blowing Jenna's old content out of proportion, people blaming cancel culture for ruining YouTube for Jenna and people even being angry at Jenna for not leaving a definite answer giving this door of possibility for her to return in a message. There wasn't much bargaining, but there were still a few spicy comments being like, give us back Jenna and we'll give you Shane. <laughs> So many people have expressed that this is now the end of authenticity, that this is now the end of genuine creators and that they are just sad now. They are sad on the internet and they are sad that Jenna is gone and she is no longer making content. And finally, some sections of the internet accept that right now, Jenna isn't here, but hopefully she is finding her happy. That could possibly be forever, but it also might not be. But regardless, what's most important is what's best for Jenna. So all of that content made around Jenna's departure ceases to exist. It doesn't matter if it's as small as a tweet or a comment or something as big as a TikTok compilation that people think would have made Jenna laugh or something as big as a commentary video discussing a message. All of these thousands upon thousands of dominoes start to add up. In specifics to videos, if Jenna never posted to YouTube and therefore couldn't say goodbye, then there is possibly some crucial videos for creators that never would have existed. If the reason you found my my channel is this video, then how would you have found me? I just want to say that this video is not me saying Jenna come back because if she wants to come back, great dope. If she doesn't want to come back, great, dope. It's whatever's best for her. My opinion as to whether she should or shouldn't come back doesn't matter. Her mental well-being is what matters. And as I said before, one of the primary reasons I think that Jenna Marbles is so loved as a person is because she is either zero or 1000 with absolutely no in between. And unfortunately, the day came when she was no longer 1000% for YouTube. But as I was saying, parts of the internet are still begging for her return as if she only left a month ago. This is what I meant by the biggest part of Jenna's domino effect is with her, is with her content, is with her audience. Because if it wasn't, would she still be missed this much all this time later? Would her return be this highly anticipated? No joke, if Jenna decided to post a video to YouTube tomorrow, by the end of the day, I guarantee that that video would have at least 20 million views. In the last 30 days, according to Social Blade, when I was researching for this video, Jenna had 4.4 million views across her channel. She has not had new content for almost two years and she is still hitting 4.4 million views across her channel. People posting consistently can't even get those numbers and I would dare say that almost no other creator would be able to take this amount of time off from YouTube from posting and still be hitting those numbers. And the big difference between Jenna and all of these other creators is that she is Jenna. And because she is Jenna, she is still wanted on social media. Her presence is still begged for on social media. And there was so much joy in her more recent content. So if Jenna was to never post to YouTube, there is over 20 million subscribers that cease to exist. There is over 20 million people that at one point in their lives were influenced by Jenna Marbles. For some, this will be bigger than others, but regardless, it's still a domino that doesn't fall. All of those videos that were posted and therefore all of those billions of moments of entertainment 
entertainment that ceased to exist. And for some people, that is crucial content. But if she never posted to YouTube in the first place, she couldn't have said goodbye. If Jenna Marvel's never posted to YouTube, then she never could have left behind the void that is her channel, is her content. And I guess this is the best application for the saying, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Because personally, I am far better off as a person for Jenna posting to YouTube, but personally, I think the internet is far better off with Jenna posting to YouTube. But that doesn't mean that everything that Jenna posted should have been posted, because regardless of my bias, if Jenna Marbles never posted to YouTube, there is quite a collection of videos that never would have been posted, and therefore people wouldn't have been hurt at the expense of her views. I'm not a person who was at the expense of these jokes, at the expense of these videos, so there are far more important voices to be heard than mine when addressing Jenna's former racist and slut-shaming content. So I can't evaluate the true impact of these jokes of these videos. I can of course sympathize, I can of course empathize, but I'll never experience it firsthand. But where I can see a sort of, for lack of a better phrasing, and I apologize, silver line in this situation for Jenna specifically is that with her past content that was called out for racism and slut shaming with it there has been a few public moments that from my perspective Jenna has shown some legitimate change in her character in her content and in her channel if Jenna never posted to YouTube then that clip from cocktails with Chloe where she answered the question at the table about white privilege being a victimless crime never would have existed this clip is one of those clips that seems huge in our reality because we know that it happened because it happened but if Jenna was to never post to YouTube it's one of those things that's hard to miss because you don't know what you're missing but from what I can see of Jenna her ability and acceptance to acknowledge her flaws publicly has allowed her audience to one watch someone grow as a person and educate themselves which in the reality of social media unfortunately isn't the norm and two seek out our own education our own learning and reflect ourselves on our impact to marginalized groups for the better and for worse. I've said this in a video before and I'm sorry that I don't remember what video I said it in but it is unfortunately all too common and I am unfortunately one of these people that need to learn how to not discriminate. I gave this example last time but there is quite a collection of words in Aussie slang that have racist origins and they were taught to me as harmless slang. With these words until someone highlighted it to me I had absolutely no idea that for a lot of people these words weren't harmless. Regardless of my intention when I use these words, the effect is that I am continuing the lifetime of these words being used every day the more that I use them, which in turn hurts people and I don't want to be doing that. So when these words are highlighted to me, and unfortunately some to this day still are, I accept that I've used them regardless of my intention and I've removed them from my vocabulary in the hopes of breaking this cycle. Because I know what side of the conversation I want to be on and this is just one small step that I can make to be there. What I am trying to highlight is that from what I can see from Jenna's old content she is also one of those people that had to be taught how to not discriminate and as she grew up and evolved as a human being she was educating herself she was learning and by doing so publicly she encouraged others to do the same. I may possibly be incredibly naive with this thought and may be too close to the situation because Jenna's self-reflection did influence me to do the same so please correct me in the comments but this is one of the reasons why I think part of Jenna's biggest butterfly effect is her departure from YouTube. Where Jenna's apology video differed from so many other creators in my personal opinion is that we get so many of these apologies that are like, hey guys, I'm sure that you've seen what's been going on and I just want to say that I am so, so sorry. What if we haven't? What if we have absolutely no clue what this person is apologizing for? We one, have to go through all of this content to see what this person is apologizing for, but two, is an apology actually an apology if you don't say what you're apologizing for? Like, I can't be the only person that when I was a kid and I did something wrong, if I didn't say what I did wrong when apologizing for it, my mum or my dad would be like, what are you apologizing for? Right? Like, that's... That's a universal experience, is it not? In Jenna's video, A Message, we as the audience didn't have to play this all too common game of hide and seek. She would say, I was racist for this, and then play the clip and discuss that clip for a hot second and then move on to the next thing that she was acknowledging and apologizing for. Of course, Jenna's apology isn't mine to accept or deny, but I can 
appreciate the honesty that she had in this apology. I can appreciate how honest she was about her flaws because this honesty influenced people like myself to consider that we have been on the wrong side of the conversation regardless of our intention and seek change. One of these people of course being Shane Dawson. In Shane's taking accountability video he specifies that he watched Jenna's a message video and was inspired to make his own. Shane at this point in time was suffering the downfall. Shane has been a controversial creator for years and has suffered quite a few call outs from the internet to take accountability for past poor behavior, but this time was just different. A video attempting to truly outline the downfall of Shane Dawson in 2020 would be an absolute ride, but this video is about Jenna. So I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. At this point in time, Shane Dawson was being called out for racism, sexism, pedophile jokes, rape jokes, and playing a crucial part in the Bi Sisters situation. I think Shane would have eventually made a video apology because with the when in doubt uploaded out blueprint, there isn't much more you can do to save your online career. Just to Apologize, take some time off the internet, and when you come back, do not address the situation whatsoever and just post as if nothing ever happened. But I think Shane's taking accountability video would have been quite different if Jenna's wasn't there as a blueprint to show a person how to make an apology video that wasn't in fear of being cancelled. Shane even said in his accountability video that his past apologies were made out of fear, which like, in my personal opinion, if you have done something wrong by me and you are apologizing to me out of fear, piss off. That isn't an apology. That is saving your ass. So without Jenna's a message video there to inspire and possibly educate Shane when it came to making his taking accountability video, there is the possibility that that video would have been more poorly received than it already has been. Jenna Marbles never post to YouTube and therefore never post the video a message and people like myself lose a very important wake up call but Shane Dawson also loses inspiration and a blueprint. But also if Jenna Marbles never post to YouTube and therefore never posts a message. Then for the last almost two years, her audience and a big chunk of the internet could not be mourning her departure and feeling her absence. Ultimately, Jenna Marbles as a person was either zero or 1000 with absolutely no in between. And I think that's a key reason why she was loved by millions of people. She was 1000% for YouTube, her channel, her content, her audience. And you can see that in everything she was a part of because it only seemed to be an extension of her channel when she was a part of something something off channel, which is perfectly fine, but where I've been able to say this makeup palette wouldn't have existed, or this book wouldn't have existed, or VidCon wouldn't have existed, I can't say that for Jenna, because she was 1000% for YouTube, her audience, her channel, her content. Which is why I think her biggest effect lies with her audience, all of the joy she brought us, all of the entertainment, and all of the lessons, the good and the bad. And why her absence is felt so incredibly all of this time later, because I can't say that any other creator would be missed so sorely and so loudly as Jenna is. You can see it in tweets, you can see it in comments, you can see it in videos, and of course, I also mean this one. How are we all feeling? I ask this every single time we do a butterfly effect because I do get a few comments being like, oh my gosh, and I need to make sure that y'all are doing all right. <laughs> Everyone who asked me to do a Jenna Marbles butterfly effect, you just knew all of the feels I was gonna get hit with. I didn't anticipate it, but y'all must have known because that Draw My Life video, oh man, that that hit me in a way where I didn't expect. I'm glad that I've done this video, but that Draw My Life video, too much links. It's a personal attack. <laughs> Even though Jenna Marbles is definitely a mixed bag when it comes to good emotions versus bad emotions because of just everything, at the same time, I'm still leaving this video feeling pretty, pretty, uh, feeling definitely more on the positive side. Sometimes I leave videos and I'm just completely exasperated, but I'm leaving this, I'm leaving this feeling pretty like, okay, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, like it's sad that she's gone. It's bittersweet. It's sad that she's gone, but I'm pretty sure she's finding her happy. And that's all I really want in this world is for people to find their happy. And if it's no longer on YouTube, then it's no longer on YouTube. Thanks for all the memories. And I just hope you're enjoying your life. But please let me know what you think in the comments because maybe I've missed something. Maybe I got something wrong. I read every single one of my comments, even though sometimes I probably shouldn't, but I read every single one of them. So please let me know all of your thoughts, all of your opinions, and also let me know who you want me to do next because Jenna was requested so Jenna I give you but also please just let me know what you want me to talk about next because I know what I want me to talk about next but I don't know what you want me to talk about next unless you tell me because I have tried I've I've tried ever so many times but I just don't have that x-men mind thing that was a brain fart I don't have telepathy <laughs> And while you're letting me know all of that, please also let me know what you think of my face. I the fuck. Are you joking? Are you jo Is this my face right? Is this my, this is my face right now. I know y'all are jealous. I know that y'all are jealous because this shit, this on my face right now. Oh, I am breathtaking. I, how have I never done that? I don't know where I saw it. It's been a thing on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok for quite some time, but I finally decided to do myself one of these things. And why have I never done this before? This looks, are you, can you see my, my face right now, me right now, absolute perfection. Fight me right now, you wouldn't dare. Maybe you would so that you could get some of the jemmies on you, but you wouldn't dare because, oh, you would lose. Look, if Narcissus looked like this when looking into that lake thing, I don't blame them. I, I do not blame, I would also, I would also do that. That would be... Fuck modesty when you look like this. <laughs> But before I distract myself way too much with the mirror, thank you all so, so much for watching, especially if you made it to this point in the video because my videos are typically on the lengthy side of things. And right now my microphone is telling me that we have a whopping four hours and 19 minutes. Your girl is getting better at this. Your girl is getting better at this. Granted, shorter script this time as well, but four hours and 20 minutes for over 5,000 words, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. She stayed on topic. She stayed on topic. As I was saying, thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to here because your time is precious. And the fact that you donated some of it to me just means the world. And I hope that you are having a fantastic day, fantastic week, fantastic month, fantastic year. And I hope that you are doing as fantastic as always. Bye everyone.